Hello, I am Squid of Love, welcome back to No Man's Sky, today we are going to continue our journey trying to discover unique planets and creatures and of course having interesting encounters, but before we do that let's talk a bit about the Atlas Pass version 1 first of all and how is this important for your journey, in general how you can easily upgrade your exosuit in order to carry a lot more stuff and have a lot more fun in the game, as you can see when I jumped, the moment I jumped in this new system, I discovered the space anomaly. I had no idea what it was. So, logically, since I'm a curious explorer, I went close to it. And it looked like a space station. Inside this space station, this space anomaly, there were two aliens, a Korvax and a Gek, waiting for me. And the most interesting part of this encounter was the fact that they were talking our language. We could communicate with them and they offered assistance to our journey. That was really interesting, I have never encountered something like that before, so I was really curious to see what they were going to give me. The Corvax offered to assist me on my journey, he offered to tell me coordinates of black holes that will help me reach the center of the galaxy faster, but since we are not trying for the center of the galaxy yet, we don't really want to get closer to the center right now. The goal is to explore and find a lot of beautiful planets and creatures, a lot of interesting new encounters. I decided to ask for aid on my exploration. He gave me a blueprint, it was okay, it was not the best. I guess I could have asked for black holes coordinates, I don't know if I can go back and ask for a black hole coordinate, I think I could, but doesn't really matter, we're gonna reach the center of the galaxy eventually. So let's move on to the Gek alien, and possibly one of the most viable items that you can get in the game, not because you can sell it for a lot of money, but you can use it to your benefit. The Gek alien gave me the blueprint to create the Atlas Pass version 1, a very important item for your progress in the game and this is because this pass can help you get a lot of interesting upgrades but also a lot of interesting items, it only requires iron and iridium, it is super easy to create it as long as you know the recipe, as long as you have the blueprint but it is very important for you to have and this is because it has some certain factions, you can do certain stuff with it it's not consumable, you can have it around with you all the time during the whole of your journey and let's go ahead and take a look at what you can do with this Atlas Pass version 1. The first use for this Atlas Pass version 1 is to unlock these debris, these containers on the surface of planets in order to gain viable items. Well, not so viable items, they are more like viable crafting components which you can use in order to create better crafting components, more viable items. But you can also sell them like this and try to make some money. It is really helpful to have this pass if you are looking for good crafting components, if you are looking for components in order to create an item that you really need, an item that you really want to have such as warp cells. But that's not the most important use of the pass. The best use of this Atlas Pass version 1 is to upgrade your exosuit. Each space station you are visiting has actually two doors, in one you can find an alien and the trade interface where you can sell your stuff and buy other viable materials, and the other one requires this Atlas Pass version 1 in order to enter. You can use this Atlas Pass every time you visit a station, like I said it's not a consumable, and inside this area you are gonna find exosuit upgrades. This is the first way that you can gain slots in your exosuit and this is actually the easiest way, as long as you have the Atlas Pass. This is mainly because every time you visit the space station, even the same space station, you will have access to a new exosuit upgrade. The total number of slots you can have on your exosuit are 48, you cannot go over that, but you will reach this number, these 48 slots very fast as long as you have the Atlas Pass. And as you can see there are more versions, version 2 and version 3 of this Atlas Pass, but I haven't really discovered them yet. If you haven't found an Atlas Pass version 1, well don't worry there are more ways, there is one more way actually to upgrade your exosuit and this is by finding exosuit upgrades on your travels. 
around the surface of plants you are visiting. This is what they look like, like escape pawns that are landed on the surface of the planet. When you visit them, there will be an exosuit upgrade in there. Now let's talk about the cost of these upgrades. Like I said, there are 48 slots that you can have that the maximum number of upgrades in your exosuit. The first exosuit upgrade that you will get in that way or with the Atlas Pass will be free. After that, every new exosuit upgrade will cost 10,000 units more than the previous one. So if you find your first exosuit upgrade, that's going to be free, but the next one will cost you 10,000 units. The third will cost you 20,000 units. The fourth will cost you 30,000 units and so on. In order to find these pods and the exosuit upgrade they contain, all you have to do is fly low above the surface of the planet. It is very easy to distinguish these escape pods, these pods, upgrading pods, and there will always be a question mark next to them that indicates an interesting location, a point of interest. If you have the Atlas Pass, it will be super easy to reach the maximum number of slots, but even if you don't have it, the planets are full with this exosuit upgrade. It is very easy to find them, all you have to do is looking around for these pods, and as you can see, the cost adds up. For this new slot, I had to pay 310k units, which sounds a lot, but it really isn't once you realize how easily you can make money, how easily you can make units in the game. Something that we are going to see very soon. Before we do that though, I would like to show you a very interesting planet at the system of Lusitan 172.6k light years away from the center of the galaxy, you can find the planet Persephone. A very interesting and unique planet and this is mainly because of its extreme conditions. During the day, there is a very high temperature at around 60 degrees Celsius, while during the night the temperature can fall down to minus 43. This isn't what makes this planet unique though. I'm pretty sure these conditions are going to be very common around the universe of No Man's Sky. What actually makes Persephone unique is the storm that is happening every 8 minutes and can make your life very hard on the surface of the planet. During the storm, the temperature on the planet will go up to 145 degrees and your hazard protection cannot really cope well with the situation, so it is quite important to always be around your spaceship, be close to your spaceship, or at least know where to find shelter in the form of a building or a cave. Despite these very hard conditions and also the fact that there is absolutely no body of water on the planet, there are a lot of interesting and unique creatures on the surface of the planet and underground of course, and there are quite a few predators as well that will hunt you down whenever they see you. This will also make your life a lot harder and quite impossible to travel around with these. If you take all these conditions into consideration, the predators, the storm, the extreme temperature at day and night, then there is only one more reason to stay on the surface of the planet other than pure exploration. And this is the planet's rich gold deposits. You can make a lot of money by gathering gold around the surface of Persephone, but it's going to be hard, you will have to seek shelter every now and then, every time there is a storm going on. At least you could make some profit while exploring this very unique and very dangerous planet. Leaving Persephone back in the very interesting system of Lusitan, I decided to follow the Atlas path and discover my very first Atlas interface. This is where we can contact the Atlas and gain some benefits, like the space anomaly we have seen at the beginning of the video. This is also a lot like a space station, and as we get closer, it opens and we can enter. Definitely a very beautiful interaction with the game, something that when you see for the first time it's quite oh, inspiring. The heart of the Atlas interface, this red or black structure that is drawing us closer to it. Like other interactions in the game, this feature is designed in a way to help us and provoke us to reach the center of the galaxy. This is why we were given two warp cells that will help us travel closer to the center, but also we have been given an atlas stone. The value of this atlas stone doesn't look to be 
quite high. Although I have heard a lot about these stones that you can sell them for quite a lot of money, I haven't really found some place that will accept them for more than the value that is written over here. I also know that we can save these atlas stones and use them when we reach the center of the galaxy, but for now I'm gonna keep it and try to discover if we can sell it at a better price than the one that is written, or if we can find another use for it. In the same system with the atlas interface there was one single planet, the planet Neptune, a quite beautiful planet which could be described as a never-ending ocean with a lot of smaller or bigger islands. A great planet with many unique and beautiful sites for you to explore. There are plenty of plants and animals to discover not only on the ground above the islands around Neptune but also underwater. An amazing place to spend some time especially if you love underwater exploration. In general it is a very relaxing experience. But that is not what makes Neptune unique. Every cave on this planet is full with vortex cubes, a very valuable item that you can sell for a nice amount of units. Everywhere you go underground on Neptune you're gonna find a lot of these cubes, you can fill your inventory with this item and go back to a space station fast if you want or to a trading outpost to sell it and make a nice amount of profit. These vortex cubes will take one slot in your inventory when you gather them. If you could fill these slots with either gold or emerald or something else, another viable material, you could make a lot more money than selling these vortex cubes. But gathering cubes is faster and that means that you will make a lot more money faster than going around trying to discover deposits of gold or emerald. This is why it is quite important to find one of these planets if you want to make some money really fast. There are more items, viable items like this vortex cube that you can find around planets like this. I have also discovered a planet full of gravitino balls, but I decided not to stick around for long because every time you collect one gravitino ball, sentinels become hostile and start shooting you, start chasing you down. It's not that hard to escape, it's not that hard to evade them, but it is Quite annoying having to always evade sentinels. This is why I was extremely happy when I discovered Neptune and these vortex cubes. This is also why it is very important to upgrade your exosuit and gain the maximum number of inventory slots as fast as possible. So when you find one of these planets full of these viable items, you will have many free slots to fill them with the items sell them back to a trading outpost or a space station and make a lot of money. What I really liked about Neptune was the fact that I could land on a trading post, search around the area, caves around the area, or wherever I could find a trading interface, search around fast in order to find caves, another ground area, fill my inventory with vortex cubes and then go back to the trading post fast, sell them for a nice amount of unit, rinse and repeat. Like this I was making around 700k units with every run on the space station or a trading outpost on the surface of Neptune. I could have made a lot more units if I had more room. To be honest, when I discovered this planet full of vortex cubes, I pretty much stopped doing everything else. And this is definitely the fastest way to make units in No Man's Sky. Find a plan like this that has not only vortex cubes but other viable items as well. Stay there for days if you want. The plants are huge. You can spend hours, you can spend days searching for viable items to fill your inventory. Make a little fortune, upgrade your gear and then you can move on with your journey.
And always don't forget that you can also win a silly face in game simply by leaving comments on my No Man's Sky videos. At the moment my number one priority is to find a better ship, I have upgraded my Omega Explorer ship into this one over here, it's nothing special, nothing great. It has more slots, I have also upgraded as you can see my multi-tool, I have 12 slots now. It has a better range on the scanner and of course I have also added a plasma launcher which is not that important, you can skip it, it's good to have but not that important, you can save some materials by not equipping one. 21 slots on this spaceship, on this starship, the most important equipment is the warp reactor sigma that allows me to jump into more areas, into more stars, I have also upgraded my exosuit. I have 45 slots, my goal is to reach 48. I have also added some very interesting new technologies, more health, better life support, better stamina when running and some more time to breathe underwater. They are all quite helpful, especially the stamina and the life support. The better breathing, the more breathing underwater you could skip, it's not that uh, that's helpful, at least at this level of uh, upgrade. My goal, like I said, is to find a better spaceship, a better starship. I haven't <laughs> decided yet how I'm going to do it. Probably I'm going to follow your advice, try to find crash ships and upgrading them one by one, gain one more slot every time. But I'm really tempted to waste this amount of money and find a ship with 36 slots or more like this one over here and then continue your advice trying to upgrade by finding crash ships either way it's a really interesting a very nice journey so far and i really can wait to see what else what else unique i'm going to discover in the universe of no man's sky thank you very much for joining me if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. I am Squid of Love and I will see you next time. Bye bye.